Pesach Sameach. Happy, happy, good and a joyful Pesach, Passover, Fasika in the Ethiopic from the Ge'ez in the Hebrew, Pesach or Pesach, Pesach, Passover, Passover, here, here, here. This season, this time, this time of the year right here, it's recording a brief um, reminder to the family on the Rastafari Jews. Also tune in to Rastafari Israelites, Rastafari Groundation. Some other brothers and sisters, co-laborers, also streaming on a couple of other platforms here and there. But here, here on Rastafari Yehudim, Rastafari Jews right here. Pesach, Passover in this season. We're preparing for the podcast, the Eve, the Eve. So here we're in the Eve of Pesach or Ereb, Ereb, Pesach, Sameach. A happy, a joyful, a good, a good one here, here, here. Now. We came across a couple of um, articles we'd like to heal up certain ones and ones Rastafari knowledge. Caught a page they had as well. like to share that here. Here is our first Rastafari Passover Haggadah. The Haggadah is the, is the telling. Haga, a Hagid, and we go into the Hebrew to tell. The telling, as it says in HaTorah, that we will tell it that we are to tell it and teach it and tell it to our children particularly the sons to whom more is given more is required so here's one of our first we could say our first um Haggadah book now Haggadah judaically hebraically is is very very important and there's different you know different how can you say different um it's like the program so to speak it's like the narrative what items we when we come together for to have that sup, the Passover sup. So worthy is Jalam is Jalam, Aras Tefari Pesach Passover Haggadah. Right here, here, here. Right now, this is we're gonna also seek to make an update, but this is from 2014, as you can see, compiled and edited by I Ras Yadinos Tefari Yadin. Right here, here, here. L O J part of the Hebrew for Rastafari, right? Also seeking to have that as a platform right there where we can go into specifically certain Hebrew, get into certain questions, reasonings to help to strengthen the family at home and abroad. Now let's just share the page right here. This is going to be brief right here as a reminder. Try to post this up here when the middle the middle of the Shabuah, very interesting time in the middle of the Shabuah. In fact, where this year is much like that year, right? That year with Robeno Yeshua Hanotri, Yeshua HaMoshiach, who we refer to as the King of Kings Christ, right? The King of Kings Christos, the King of Kings Anointed, speaking of Jesus Christos and the Amharic and Yeshua HaMoshiach, right? Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Isla Iris. So here, 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 prepping for Pesach. Here in the season, the reason for the season, right? The eve of Passover and day one coming forward. The the, the real days or the main days that are like the, the Sabbaths, the Shabbat, the rest days are like the first coming up in the new light. And the last day. Now, here we count this from like the 5th to the 13th in the 2023 year, right? But now we know from HaTorah, right, that it's between the eaves beginning on the 14th, right, of the lunar solar month, according to HaTorah, known as Abib. Aviv, modern Hebrew, they say Aviv, Aviv, like Tel Aviv. Now, Tel Aviv, a heap of, a hill of barley, because the Abib. So if you look in Ha Torah, A-B-I-B, you find in Exodus particularly, where the month is called Abib. In modern Hebrew, after the Babylonian um, return from Babylon, the Babylonian uh, captivity, certain Babylonian and other names were adopted. So you hear other Yehudim and even us technically referred to it as Nisan, Nisan 14th. But actually it is Abib, right? Abib, because that's one of the only months, at least the first month, that is actually named in HaTorah, 
right? So we actually have the naming of that month Abib. And Abib is the barley, because the barley is the first to, to, to sprout up, right, within the, the spring season. So there's also a seasonal aspect, right, to pass over to Pesach. Now we count it, unlike other Hebrews and Israelites, they, they have another way that they count it, right? There's a question about calendars. How are we really accounting for time? Right? Time is a very, very key thing, time. And one thing about the holy days, the holidays, especially for the sons, because it says three times in a year shall all of the males right, of Israel, right, the zakar, right, zakar, zakar. Zakar means male, like zakar u nekeba, nekeba female. Zakar, as we have in Bereshit, we have in Genesis chapter 1 in Bereshit, first chapter. Zakar, but also means to remember. Also, Zakar. So there's a two truths of the Hebrew, right? Hopefully, we get into that on the Hebrew for Rastafari. Now, here, here, this is a kind of a, a visionary, prophetic view, right, of of Passover and what is referred to pseudonymously as Easter. Now, is it Passover or Easter? Okay, here we're gonna segue right here, here, here. This is um. This is like a, a visionary view, right? Where we have the Father, right? The Son, the Holy Spirit, and the brethren. You know, so here we have the King of Kings, of course, right here. You know this particular, many Rastafari know this particular one. Now, we're not saying that this is how it was then, right? But in spirit and in truth, right? This is the vision of how it is now. The vision, right? That that vision that brings us together. Now here we're going to segue to this particular article right here that we came across. It's a good article. We we read a portion of it, right? And going to come forward to it again. You we looked up Rastafari and Passover. A good search right there. Um also one can download the first Rastafari Passover Haggadah, the narrative, the telling as it's a teacher to our children. It has the 15, right? The 15 or so steps of Pesach. There are 15 steps. And this is interesting because Passover occurs on the lunar month of Abib, the first of the moons, the first of the month, between the evenings, between the evenings. So we have the 14th, right? This eve right here, moving forward into the Passover day, day one, coming up in the new light. So the evening and morning, as we know, is one day, that principle from Ha Torah. So it's all about time. I know many of the Hebrews and Israelites, ISUPK, other, the One West Israelites and others that come from that particular school, we consider it somewhat of a broken branch because we know that it all begins truly over here in the diaspora with the royal order. The royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, the commandment keepers, congregation of the living God, Elohim Chaim. So this article here on Rasta Knowledge, Rasta knowledge, it says Rastafari, Passover and Easter. Should Rasta be celebrating them? This is a good article. I'd like to get into this one much more right here. But we're pointing it out right here because that was the first thing came up in the search. We said, okay, let's let's just gather a couple of um, word picks here and just remind the family before we begin off the preparatory the evening service on the blog talk on the live stream on the rastafari israelites tonight right the evening time so this is an interesting article right here just click on it if we can go to it right here and it's from i think april 21st right april 21st so you can see the title right there rastafari passover and they say and easter <laughs> Should Rasta be celebrating them, right? Um, so they go through a quick look, you know, you know, but now you can see how the question comes down right here. Who wrote this particular article? I don't think that, okay, it's, it's, it's B. Co. Lion, B. Co. Lion, April 21st, 2021, right? So here it says, today we'll take a quick look into Rastafari, Passover and Easter. Should we who are of the faith of Rastafari celebrate past? Passover or Easter, right? And it says, today, many people who are of the faith of Rastafari, even those outside of Rastafari, tend to want to celebrate Easter, 
Easter, for those who are truly of the faith of Rastafari know that Easter is, they say, a pagan holiday. Easter is not the faith of Rastafari. Rastafari, the foundation and principles of the faith, is based on his Masih Hala Selassie, I, Kanamah Hala Selassie, and the Bible. This is, this is, generally speaking, this is true. This is true what is written there. Now, you might find some documentaries out there where the narrator is going to say Easter and going to point to Ethiopia and to even his majesty. I point that out there, not to go against what our brother said here. What he said was accurate in the overview. But just remember that a lot of things get lost in translation. So while the Ethiopians, right, of that time of his majesty's revelation, right, truly didn't call it Easter from their perspective. That is a verse that appears one time, one time. It appears actually one time in the King James Version of the Bible and even there. You know what? Let's go here and we're going to sum up this right here. We're going to sum up this. Quaid says, for my part, I glory in the Bible. So you might hear the narrator. You might hear the narrator saying something of the effect of, um, you know, Easter in connection with Ethiopia, in connection with his majesty. But actually, that is, in other words, we say Fasika, right, which is the Ethiopic way of saying Pesach or Passover. And they say Easter. So Easter is strictly a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Gentile King James Version of the Bible sort of thing, right? That a lot of other people have gotten into because what well, it says, knowledge, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. They're not free of the KJV. When we say of the KJV, they are like a KJV only. It's only what's in the KJV. They think that, you know, King James and his Hebraicists went up to Mount Sinai and received it like that. Okay, here we have two verses. Well, actually, the first verse is not even really there, you know, but there's an underlying connection with something that probably has that sound to it. You know what I mean? We'll get into that. But the first overt verse is Acts 12 and 4. So when I read the article, like we said, we didn't go into all the detail. We'd like to go do a follow up on that, you know, so maybe this will be like just a part one, a, a kind of an intro. Rastafari, you know, Passover or Easter, right? Passover and Easter, should we celebrate? Should we be celebrating them? That was a good, very good title right there in the opening. And a couple other things we read really showed us that, okay, this is a good article. We're not saying that we're going to agree with everything in it, but we're going to go through it. And we pointed out to the family right here since it's like 2020, what was it, 20. 21, I think, yeah. So it's still a, a fairly recent article, right? And for ones to become a little more informed and for us to have a reason, man. Come, 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 make with reason, just vibes in. Acts 12 and 4 says, And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after what after easter you see what it says easter to bring him forth to the people all right so easter notice right here one of the notes says easter the greek you see the gr the gr is the greek or the coin of greek what does it say in the coin of greek passover what what say what say what it, so actually in some of your bibles they might have a marginal note in your Bibles, if you have hard copy Bibles, it, some of the Bibles have marginal notes, whether it's the AV or the RV, the authorized version or the revised version of the King James Bible will have Passover, right? Passover. Let's go to the next one right here. A quaternion is a file of four soldiers, right? Four soldiers. Now, there's a whole backstory on this in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, verse 4. We're not going to get into that right here. The main part we're zooming into is the word Easter. You see, it's the Strong's G3957. The G3957. What does the G3957 say, right? Let's click on it. It says, now this is the coin of Greek. It's all Greek. Is it all Greek? Yeah, well, it is. Well, that, in the Greek, it says right there. Let's highlight that. It says, Pascha, 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 Pascha. It says Pascha, 
as you see the transliteration says Pascha, right? Pascha. That's that's the Greek way, because you see the Greek language doesn't have certain letters and certain sounds that the Hebrew has, as we know it's an Afro-Shemitic, African Shemitic language, right? And those who spoke and even first wrote those things were our own people, were Yehudi, Jews, Israelites, you could say ones like Paul and others, Rabbi Shaul, right? And so they were like us in the sense that many of us speak English, you know what I mean? But in our faith-based way, we seek to think in the Hebrew. Some of us, English is not our first language, similar to many of the Hebrews and the Yehudi at that particular time. And like Rabbi Shaul, AKA the great apostle to the other nations, the Gentile, Paul, like Paul, many of us were born, we have citizenship, as he said, citizenship, right? We have, we have citizenship, right? Even though we are, and we claim to be Yehudi and Israelites. You can see that right there. You see it, it's on the screen right there. Right, Rastafari Israelites coming up. That's like the heads up that we only have a couple of more moments right here just to touch on this. So should we celebrate Passover or Easter? If we put it in Ethiopic terms, should we celebrate Fasika? Let's put it in Hebrew terms. Should we celebrate Pascha? Pascha? Pa? The the pet in the Hebrew in some pointings is pointed as a fat, a fat pet. Many languages have this outside of English. It might seem a little confusing at first, but we have to get into the linguistic science. So Thea definition here says that Pascal. So the Pascal, you hear them say Pascal. Pascal actually, did you know, come from Pascha. Pascha or Pesach. Pesach. Right? In the Hebraic and then say Pesach. Pesach. Fasika. You get it? Pesach, Pesach, Fasika, right? And we see that right, the underlying word of Easter, right? In the Bible, see, we study. That's what even the Bible says in the New Testament. It says, study to show yourself approved. And if we study, right, our study reveals that Easter right there is a mistranslation of the Hebraicists and the translators from the KJV, right? And even after that, many of them saw that error, corrected that. But because one, you know, people are people, they still say, oh, it's the 1611. 1611 is a good version, the one with the old English. We're not denying that right there. But we are not saying like King James only, like many, you know, um, so-called Christians and, 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 and even some of the Israelites coming from out of Christianity not being fully washed, they will say things like that, right? This is what we have to learn, so we have to study, right? So Easter, Easter appears in the King James Version of the Bible, mainly and only. But think about how, what is it, from a little, um, you know, like a little spark, how much of a fire can kindle like from from that little this one verse the one and only verse see so the easter you have to now ask what is why did they take pascha as easter because around the same time and season some of the heathen and other nations with ishtar ishtar s ishtar right not our esther hester but their ishtar so it comes from the whole Ishtar, Ashtar, Ashtarot, so forth and so on. This is why we have the bunny eggs and, and the Easter eggs and all of that other stuff that comes out of that. People say Pagan, Paganus, that's a Roman term. We'll say just other nations, right? Or in a kind of a biblical sense, the heathen. That's speaking of other nations outside of Kol Yisrael, Yasharala, Israel. Right, so the Paschal sacrifice, which was accustomed to be offered for the people's deliverance of old from Egypt. Now, also a note right here is that we have to upgrade, right? And in our Passover Haggadah book, we point to it, right? The prophecy where it says no longer will they say, <clears throat> blessed be, no, no, no longer will they say the Lord liveth, chai, Yahuwah, chai, Yahuwah, chai, Yahuwah. No longer they say the Lord liveth who brought uh, who brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, but Ha Yahweh, right? Jehovah Yahweh liveth, right? Who brought up and who led, 
my the seed of the bite, Israel, the beta Israel, even we the beta Israel here in these Americas and Caribbean, out of where it says the North Country. That's the prophecy there. So there has to be an upgrade of that. And this is why we're proposing this as Rastafari Yehudim, as Ethiopian Hebrews, because that's the connection there in the prophecy of Rastafari and the King Messiah. Weep not, behold, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. So the Lion and the Lamb. So the Paschal Lamb, the Lamb, the Israelites, the Bnei Yisrael, the sons of Israel, were accustomed to slay and eat on when the 14th day of the month of Nisan. Now they put Nisan here. This is just their, their definition. But Nisan in the Bible is Abib, A-B-I-B, -I -B, from like Abebe, like we say, Adis Abeba. Abeba is a flower. And we have Abebe means to bud, to bud into flower. And the actual that which buds and flowers, Abeba. But etymologically, we can see the similarities and the one root of the royal Amharic, that pure language he was turned to the people from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia and the Hebrew, right? And we as Ethiopian Hebrews and as African Shemites or Afro-Shemitic people. So we have Abib, right? Abib is the barley, the month of Abib, according to Torah, but called by other Yehudi after the Babylonian captivity, Nisan. The first month of the year in memory of the day when their fathers were preparing, preparing, prepping to depart from Mitzrayim, Mitzrayim, the Sematawi, right, were bidden by Hailehim to slay and eat the lamb and to sprinkle their, their doorposts with its blood that the destroying Malaak angels seeing the dam, the blood might pass over their dwellings. Now Moshiach. Right, crucified is likened to the slain Paschal Lamb. Is likened, right? That allegorical nature. Yes, the Paschal Supper, the Paschal Feast, the Feast of the Pesach, extending, right, according to the Hebrew calculation, from the fourteenth to the twentieth day of the month, the first month known in the Bible in Exodus as Abib. Right. So they say right here of Aramaic origin, they're saying Pascha or Pesach, Pesach, Pesach. Here we have the word Pesach. There's Pesach right there, Pesach, Pesach. Sacrifice of Passover, the animal victim of the Passover, the festival of the Passover. It's a noun masculine. It's a pretermission, an exemption, technically passing over. Here's the root of that, Pasach, Pasach. Pasach in the Hebrew means to pass over, to spring over, to skip over, to pass over can mean to limp, right? To limp over, like to get over, right? We have to get over this, right? A primitive root that is to hop. So pas Pasach means hop, hip, hop, means hop. That is figurative to skip over, to spear. By implication, right, to hesitate. Right. Also, literally to limp or to dance. Think about this. All this is all part of the roots. Pesah, Passover. So we're going to kick this whole thing out the way. This Easter thing. That's a mistranslation. And even though they acknowledge the mistranslation, they go on. They acknowledge they're wrong and they go on in the wrong. Ain't that something? We're not going to acknowledge the wrong and go on in that wrong. It was wrong. Right, it's Passover. So in Acts 12 and 4, it just said that after Pesach, after Passover, right, the Passover, the meal, the day, the festival, or the special sacrifices connected with it. So notice what they have. First, they, they even put first Easter, but if we look up Passover, right, if we look up Passover in the scripture, think about it. Easter only appears really one time. We just showed you that right there. Let's look at Passover. Passover occurs 73 times. Think about it. 73 verses are found, maybe more times, but 73 individual verses where Passover is. So we have 73 over here, and then we have Easter one time. Think about it. 72 nations. Ah, 72, right? You know, there's a difference between the 73 times Passover and the one time we have Easter found. And then we showed you already, right? How they even put, right, 
in the other verse, let's go back to that just one more time before we seal up right here because we're looking at the time right here and um, they're going to be hosting. So there's a lot to share right here, but go through some of the basics, right? And just keep the, you know, like I said, the mood and the attitude, you know what I mean? The spirit, the spirit of the season in spirit, you know, and in truth. So it says after Easter, the G3957, and notice what it has as Pascha, right? So the word underlying it is actually Pascha. So it's actually should have been after Passover. Imagine all the confusion that could have been avoided. But then they put after the colon and the hyphen, they put Easter first. See, after the colon and the hyphen in Strong's definition, it tells you how that root word is translated. Not saying it's the correct translation as they're telling you right here. It has nothing to do with Easter. They didn't tell us anything about an Easter. What they told us is about Pascha. They said in the Greek it's Pascha. So how in the world does it get into the English as Easter? It's because of the King James version the king james hebraicus they made an error and a lot of people want to say whether we think king james is this or that it is erroneous right and that's what the article that we caught right there you know on rasta or rasta it's actually rasta knowledge you know by Biko lion so here 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 let's go on this is on the and the, the, the bible right here the bible now what's interesting here his match is speaking about about no doubt you all remember reading in Acts of the Apostles right here, right? About how Philip baptized the Ethiopian official. He is the first Ethiopian on record. We have that in Acts of the Apostles chapter 8. Now, what's interesting is the time and season we have Acts of the Apostles chapter 8, it seems to be, right, within that season, right? Within that season, most likely. It is the Feast of Trumpets sometime around the Sukkot, Sukkot season, Feast of Trumpets time. Although some say it might have been closer to the Passover time. Could we look at Acts of the Apostles? It's after the Passover in that season. It's then talking about Pentecost, Shabuot, the harvest, the Feast of Weeks, Shabua, Shabuot, Weeks in the Hebrew there. And then we have a couple of chapters later, we see the Ethiopian official going, the Ethiopian Hebrew, black Jew, beta Israel, right, of the Meroe, Meroe, you know, area in Sudan, you know, lower, we call that lower Kush, in the lower Kush region, the lower Ethiopia, lower Kush region going forward, right, to pilgrimage, because he went forward Right to worship. Now we know that there's three times in the year that all who are Hebrews or Israelites, faithful Israelites, right, sons of Israel, especially three times in the year, should all the males. Now we have this 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 Ethiopian who is called a Yehudi. Well, he is a Jew because he's going as others in Acts of the Apostles. Remember, talk about there were Yehudi Jews, Israelites from all over check check so we just point that out right there that's another connection for the reason of the season right also another very good book by richard h schwartz here judaism and vegetarianism connecting you know the dots of scripture right with the ideas right that might be called vegan or vegetarian right out of the scripture right out of torah right so here we're getting ready for these days in this season, in this time, brothers and sisters, Melkam Fasika, right, getting ready to sup, right, even sup as they supped, right, over 2,000 years ago. Like the Passover or what Yeshua observed as the Last Supper did not occur on Friday. I want to just point that out. Didn't occur on Friday, right? Didn't occur on Friday. Actually occurred earlier in the Shabuwa around the third day that people will call Tuesday. And then the whole barbed wire act, you know, that whole faulty trial and everything against Yeshua took place from the like the nighttime or what we call the nighttime of the Tuesday into the Wednesday. And then it was on that Wednesday, right? They had to get ready for the Thursday, right? And so we count the three days from the Thursday. 
the Friday, the Sabbath day, then early Sunday Magdalena, right? And the women who were preparing to prepare the body of Yeshua Robeno, that's what we have in the Torah the first day of the week. So it wasn't a good Friday. Just want to point that out right there. Just these things we get into more detail can show and prove, right? Can resource up. Because we already got the source, the source up. In our, in our heads and hearts so we can then resource because they source up the source of the almighty will resource up All right so right here this is just a, a sample chart of the readings during the time and the season right what it's all about right we're going to touch on sayings and things really that are not found in scripture so actually easter is not found in scripture only in the faulty translation Right, Acts chapter 12, verse 4. We already went through that. Last Torah reading and feeding we had in this season. Vayikra, Vayikra. And he called, calling, calling, calling. Right, right here, here, here. You know, from that time to this time right here. Very good album by um, Rastafari, Rastafari Yehudim, Rastafari Jews. You can say right here, others. Of the family, David Solid Gold right here, Feast of the Passover, get a copy of it. Behold the Lamb, right? So here in the season, the Lion and the Lamb, right? The Lion and the Lamb. Did we get that picture over here? I think we had got it somewhere over here. It might not be in this shuffle right here, but there was a beautiful Lion and Lamb, right? Lion and Lamb photo you know, that we picked up. We probably lost it in the search. You know, sometimes, you know, we got a lot of, you know, word picks here, right? But we did touch on the main part that we were seeking to touch on, and we'll pick up more. Hayahua, Jehovah live, that, that brought up the seed of the house of Israel, right, out of this, right, out of this north country. So should we observe Passover or Easter, we should observe it as Pesach, as Fasika. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. Pesach, Sameach. Rastafari, Pesach, Sameach.